Hello and welcome to Financial Accounting 2 Tutorial 19E. This is the last in a series of tutorials focused on preparing the Statement of Cash Flows and brings together all the work that we've done in Tutorials 19A through 19D. This tutorial includes a number of learning objectives. The first will be to present a completed Statement of Cash Flows. Second will be to review supplementary disclosures. Third will be to calculate current cash debt coverage ratio followed by a calculation of the cash debt coverage ratio, and then finally a calculation of free cash flow. This tutorial is still related to the McCoy Limited example. At this point, it's presumed that you have reviewed all the previous tutorials. The only thing left in this problem is the last requirement, and that is to use the indirect method to prepare a statement of cash flows in good form with all the required disclosures for the year ended December 31st, 2020. Here it is. If you review tutorial A, you will recall the determination of the net cash flows and operating activities to be $122,450, right? We started with net income. We added and subtracted any non-cash adjustments. And then we looked at the changes in working capital for all of the current assets and current liabilities that relate to working capital. Then we had the cash from investing activities and we had 1,750 in from investing activities. And then finally, we had cash flows from financing activities. And our net cash flows from the financing activities were an outflow of $166,200. Then what we must do is add all those together. So 122,450 plus 1,750 minus $166,200 is a net change in cash of $42,000 outflow, a negative $42,000. Now, if you look at the balance sheet and if you've been keeping track and knocking off all the accounts that we've dealt with, there's one account that we haven't actually done any work with and that's the cash. Well, what we do is we save the cash until the end. We take the 42,000 net change in cash provided from our work done so far. We add any beginning balance, so $42,000 net outflow plus $71,000 cash at the beginning of the year should equal $29,000 in cash at the end of the year, and it does. So we know that we've done our work correctly, and we should be very happy at this point, right? Because there's a lot of work that went into it. In terms of supplemental disclosures, remember that with the indirect approach, we need to show the cash paid for interest, and we determine that to be $10,800. And so that would be your interest expense, plus or minus any change in interest payable. We had cash paid for income taxes of 24200 so you need to go to the income statement and then add any change in taxes payable. And then remember from the investing section tutorial, we had equipment valued at 25000 that was acquired in exchange for shares. So we have to make sure that that's included as well. So this is the completed statement of cash flows with the indirect method. And when it comes to the indirect versus direct method, the only section that's different is the operating section. Investing and financing are the same, and so is the end piece here. So what this tells us, even though it wasn't required in the question, but you should always be able to look at the questions and interpret what happened with the business. So the company generated 122,450 from operations. That's good. At least it's generating positive cash from operations. It generated a little bit of cash from investing activities. So there were some acquisitions of assets and disposals of assets, but the big item here is a dividend that was received from the associate. If that dividend from associate wasn't there, then the company would have net cash outflows related to investing activities. And then finally, the company used 166200 in cash from financing activities. So it basically the biggest piece of that are dividends of 183000 So the company reacquired and reissued some bonds. It repurchased some common shares, but the big piece is related to the dividends. So you should be able to look at a statement of cash flows and really understand what happened here. What you want to see in a business is positive cash flow generation from operating activities for sure. If we wanted to see what this would look like using the direct method, well, here it is. The only difference, again, is the operating activities section. The cash from investing and financing are the same. The total amount 
of cash generated from operating activities is still 122,450. But what we have here is a much cleaner and more understandable statement when it comes to using the direct method because some users may not really understand, you know, changes in working capital, amortization or gains and losses, non-cash items and, and those kinds of things. But even the most basic user can look at this and go, hey, the company received cash from customers of $980,200. It paid cash to suppliers of 311530 etc. It paid cash to employees, specific cash for interest, specific cash for taxes, and then cash for everything else. So very easy for the user to understand. This is why the method is preferred. Now, the other piece here with the supplemental disclosures, look what's missing. There's no cash paid for interest and no cash paid for income taxes. The only one here is the equipment that was valued at 25,000 in exchange for shares. Well, that's okay because look, the direct method actually shows you right in the body of the statement, the cash paid for interest and cash paid for taxes. So we are still meeting the disclosure requirements for cash paid for interest and taxes, but it's actually right in the statement. So with the direct method, the supplemental disclosures do not include cash paid for interest and taxes because the direct method includes those disclosures right in the statement. The sixth and final requirement for this problem will be to conduct a basic analysis of McCoy Limited's cash management, including cash coverage ratios and free cash flow. To start our cash flow analysis, we're actually going to need some information from the balance sheet. Actually, the only thing we're going to need are some liabilities from the balance sheet. The first thing we're going to have to calculate for cash coverage ratios is the current cash debt coverage ratio. And so the formula for that is quite simple. It's net cash flow from operating activities, which we have calculated to be 122,450, but divided by the average current liabilities. That means we're going to have to take the uh, year 2019 plus 2020 and divide by two. That's where these numbers come from. The 69,000 is the 2019 total current liabilities now very specific here is that the bonds are long term so everything here including an up to dividends payable are current for the 2019 they're 69,000 and the 2020 add up to 105,200 so we add those together, divide by two, the average current liabilities is 87,100. So 122,450 net cash flow from operating activities divided by 87,100 average current liabilities gives us a ratio of 1.406 or 1.41 to 1. Our benchmark for that is, you know, typically 1 to 1. What this means for us, this is actually quite good, right? The company generates more than enough cash from operating activities to cover its average current liability. So you want that to be you know, as high as it can be. The next ratio, and I'll do this one in blue, is similar, it's cash debt coverage ratio. The only difference is it's not current. So it takes the net cash flow divided by the average total liabilities. Again, it will take our 2019 and 2020 balances of the total 2019 would be 149,000. And the total 2020, these would all add up to 205,200. Divided by two, the average total uh, liabilities or total debt is 177,100. So this gives us a ratio of 0.69, almost 0.7. This is still actually pretty high considering that this also includes the bonds, right? So that means that the company has enough cash flow from operating activities to cover more than half of the total liability. So again, the higher the number, the better. And now the last one is free cash flow. Free cash flow is very simple. Again, it looks at cash flow from operating activities, but then what it does is deducts any capital expenditures and dividends. So McCoy generated 122,450 in cash from operations. When we take off the capital expenditures, the company needs to use to purchase capital to be able to run the business, equipment, things like that. This would not include purchases of investments or any of that, okay? It's only capital expenditures that are necessary to conduct normal business. And then we take off the dividends, right, of 183200 That leaves a free cash flow of 90750 negative. 
this isn't great because what this means is that after taking away the capital expenditures and the dividends, the company cannot reinvest any operating capital back into the business. To see this on an ongoing basis may be cause for alarm, but every once in a while might not be too bad. This particular year is the way it is because of this very, very high dividend. If the company didn't pay dividends, then it would have a lot of free cash flow to do whatever with. In fact, if there were no dividends paid during the year, the free cash flow would be quite high. And then that could be interpreted as cash to be used to either repurchase shares or to pay dividends. The more free cash flow a business has, the more flexibility it has with what to do with that cash. Time to wrap up with some key points to remember. Under both IFRS and ASPE, the statement of cash flows can be prepared using either the indirect or direct approaches. The direct method is preferred, and now you know why, because of the more simplified and more useful information it provides the users in terms of cash from customers, cash to employees, suppliers, etc. The completed statement of cash flows includes those three sections, the operating, the investing, and the financing activity sections. Any change in cash from the operating, investing, and financing activity sections must reconcile to beginning and ending cash, cash and cash equivalents, actually, on the balance sheet. Now, cash equivalents includes any short-term, highly liquid investments that are readily convertible to cash with little risk. Any bank overdrafts are to be netted out against cash as well. So if you have a bank overdraft, Let's say you have cash of 10,000 and an overdraft of you know, 4,000, then we would net them out and show cash a net of overdraft of 6,000 at the end of the year, whatever it was at the beginning of the year. And those would be included in the opening and closing cash balances that are provided, as long as they're, of course, an integral part of the overall cash management for the company. And finally, interpreting cash flow results is very important in ensuring long-term sustainability of the company. And so some common measures we use for that are the current cash debt coverage ratio, which uh, takes operating cash flows divided by average current liabilities. Cash debt coverage would take to operating activity cash flow divided by uh, average debt. And then, of course, free cash flow, which takes operating cash flows less capital expenditures and dividends. This concludes tutorial 19E and all tutorials related to the statement of cash flows. Again, if you need to review the operating activity section, have a look at tutorials 19A and B. For investing activities, look at tutorial 19C. And for financing activities, go back to tutorial 19D.